The GT3590S Mark III Reaper has been out for over five years and we're looking today at its second revision from this in order to be able to be more competitive in a 62 millimeter turbocharger market. The purpose of this turbocharger is that it blends Speedtrack Consulting's design and utility with a reliability that's only found with Garrett products. And to be able to find a top end drag race competitor in the four and six cylinder racing classes as well as a road race application for a larger six cylinder and eight cylinder displacement categories. And it's a great 62 millimeter variant for those that are in a saturated market already and this is even before the GTW journal bearing and ceramic bearing turbochargers which I've been released recently can deal with. For the engine size applications that this is really working with we're looking at 1.8 to 2.5 liters in a four cylinder application, 2.5 to 3.7 liters in a six cylinder application as a single unit or as a twin set, or anything 4 liters and above all the way to 6.6 .6 liters in a V8 application. Most people are going to be using these as a twin set. For the power level and characteristics in the 4 cylinder application, we're looking at over 800 wheel horsepower. That's for those that have a good flowing cylinder head, aftermarket camshaft, plan to use high RPM for a red line, and high boost pressure ratios. For the 6 cylinder applications, this typically goes to about 780 to 800 wheel horsepower and are typically used as a twin set for a lot of top end power, but can also be used as a single unit to make over 750 to 780 wheel horsepower. For the 8 cylinder applications, of course, 90% of the people that use this particular turbocharger use them as a twin set and can make over 1300 to 1400 wheel horsepower at over 25 pounds of boost pressure ratio. The major effective ranges for boost pressure and for RPM are based upon the fact of when the turbocharger is going to reach maximum pressure under 20 PSI and what RPM ranges that, that this sets in. This is just a standard example that a lot of turbochargers are using to find out when the turbo is going to spool up. In this particular case for the four cylinder class we've seen in most cases that about 15 PSI to 37 PSI is where boost effective range is going to be with an RPM effective range of about 4400 RPMs to 9000 RPMs in the journal bearing set. And the ball bearing version is going to be a little bit better for all of these categories. For the six cylinder, this goes down to about 12 PSI to 31 PSI with an effective RPM range of 3400 RPMs to 8000 RPMs. For the eight cylinder category, and we're using this as though this is a twin set, it goes all the way down to about 9 PSI to 26 PSI boost pressure ratio with an effective RPM band of about 3000 to 7800 RPMs. For the composition, this is really a full Garrett turbocharger with the exception of the STC compressor wheel. We're using a TO4S compressor cover with a 4 inch inlet. Typically it's going to be a standard compressor cover. This one is using a portage shroud that's for an additional charge. The difference is going to be the T67075 billet aluminum, the same type of aluminum that's used in the GTX series with a 7x7 configuration which is capable of 80 pounds a minute or over 800 wheel horsepower. It's also using a billet back plate as standard and you have a choice of ball bearing or journal bearing cartridges. Even the journal bearing is going to have water fittings to be used for this because this is the best way to maximize longevity for a turbocharger in which the oil it normally would use for two jobs of lubrication and cooling. Here, when using water cooling, even in journal bearing applications, you're going to have the best of two worlds. For the ball bearing applications, water cooling is required in order to run properly and like with the GTR and GTX series, the restrictor is going to be particularly used. For the turbine side, standard is going to be a T3 configuration and a .82 AR. You have a choice of either 72 millimeter or 75 millimeter exhaust wheels. As you can tell, as always, these are coated. This is a higher heat compressor coating that's capable of about 600 degrees and looks fantastic. While the turbine side, bracket, and turbine housing is going to have over 2,000 degrees of being able usability. This helps with being able to turbo spool up better, give it a great look, and at the same time be able to have heat stay within the exhaust system as it exits. Specifications for this, of course, are going to be, again, TO4S compressor cover with a 4-inch inlet, a 2-inch outlet, 62.1 millimeter uh, compressor wheel with a 91 millimeter reducer, larger than a T67. Billet backplate is standard. The cartridge is going to be in the ball bearing configuration using required water fittings at 14 millimeter that normally go to a dash six. And for oil pressures that are going to be 22 to 40 PSI of oil pressure, they will use a 716 bash 24 uh, 
30 thousandths restrictor as shown here. For the journal bearing cartridges, they're going to use the optional use of water ports, which is going to be 3 8 NPT to dash 6. And for the oil feed, for anything that's going to be over 75 pounds of oil pressure, we recommend this particular one that's going to be 1 8 NPT at a 60 thousandths to 65 thousandths oil restrictor. It's best to not use any of those that use a restrictor plate in which you see an oil feed fitting here and it bolts to a plate down here with a hole drilled at the bottom of that plate from companies such as Kinagawa or others from eBay. These unfortunately do not allow the oil to properly pressurize and fill the oil galleys and can easily starve the cartridge of oil that's needed in order to be run properly. For the turbine housing, once again, be either in journal bearing or in ball bearing configuration, Comes standard as T31 2.5 inch 4 bolt with an A2AR and a T3 configuration with a choice of 72 or 75 millimeter exhaust wheels. For the ball bearing version, you have a choice of either T4 open and 0 0.68, 0 0.88, and 0.96 AR configurations or T4 divided, in which you would have a choice of 1.01 and 1.15 AR configurations. The T4 divided comes in with a 4-inch V-band, while the T3 open would come in with a 3-inch V-band. Unfortunately, at this particular time, T3.2 AR should not come with a V-band option at this particular time, like with the GTX series, but that's coming up soon in which we're able to change that. In the meantime, one can be able to use a 2.5-inch, 3-inch V-band conversion flange and fitting that we have available to be able to convert this to a V-band. The only drawbacks that really that we see in this particular turbo is the fact that there's going to be a lot of questions in testing, especially comparing this turbo to the new GTW journal bearing and ceramic ball bearing turbochargers that have been released by Garrett. And as usual with anything else, this is another 62 millimeter turbocharger that one has to be able to make a decision with in regards to their particular type of racing. We find that this is a fantastic turbocharger. It's been a staple for Speed Track Consulting for a number of years. We really want to be able to continue this to grow, and this thing is a fantastic turbo. Thanks again for gearing, and as always, happy boosting. Take care.